We want to welcome all of you to this service for Donna Larson. Uh, we know it's taking place uh, at uh, an unplanned time. Uh, I think we've had some Minnesota weather come in. And uh, it reminds me of a, another family event with some Minnesota winter uh, some years ago. Um, but we're going to commend Donna into God's care this evening. Remember God's amazing promises of eternal life and allow his Holy Spirit to minister his comfort in our lives. And let's begin doing all of this with a hymn, Just a Closer Walk with Thee, number 564 in your blue hymnals. Number 564 in your blue hymnals. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all of our sorrows so we can comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our sister Donna Larson. We thank you for giving her to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us your aid so we may see in death the gate to eternal life, that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This time I would like to read a brief outline of Donna's life, a life I know you're <clears throat> all very familiar with, uh, but it was a beautiful life. We can praise God for the number of years that God gave Donna and the time that we had with her, but we know she'll be missed. And, um, and we're so grateful that God can minister his comfort and perhaps in a small way tonight and in the days and weeks ahead, uh, fill that empty spot in our hearts with his love and peace and promises of eternal life. Donna Ray Larson, the green-thumbed, sweet-toothed whirlwind known for her strength, sass, and unmatched sugar cookies, passed away on January 7, 2024, surrounded by her family. Born in Oakland, Nebraska on November 22, 1933, to Elmer Lester and Maddie Marie Rickard, Donna kept everyone on their toes for the past 90 years. Family was the cornerstone of her life. 
1954, she married Gerald William Larson, embarking on a 60-year adventure filled with humor, love, and DQ soft serve. Donna's pride and joy <clears throat> were her daughters, Joan and Cindy, who grew up nourished by her fierce devotion, her generous cooking, and her unyielding spirit. Donna was always there to cheer on her children and guide them through life's challenges with a firm hand and a warm heart. Over the years, her sphere expanded to include an additional four grandchildren and ten great-grandchildren. All the while, Donna's home in Euling, Nebraska, was the undisputed epicenter of holiday life, tying the family together for decades. Never one to sit still or sleep in, Donna was active in the Oakland and Euling communities for most of her life. She was a Girl Scout troop leader, an avid gardener, and a longtime member of the First Evangelical Lutheran Church of Oakland. In addition to her years as a farmer's wife, she worked at the Oakland Gas Company, the Blue Moon Cafe, the Logan View High School Cafeteria. She deeply cherished the lifelong friendships formed along the way. Donna was preceded in death by her husband, Gerald, her parents, her sister, Nancy Wallerstedt, and infant sister, Betty, brothers-in-law, Harry Larson, Richard Larson, Emery Johnson, Robert Davis, and Rodney Nelson, also sisters-in-law, Jean Larson, Vernell Larson, and Mary Johnson. In her final years, Donna's tireless spirit was finally tamed by a stray cat that adopted her, simply named Kitty. Survivors include her daughters and sons-in-law, Joan and Dave Bixler of Eden Prairie, Minnesota, Cindy and Dan Christensen of Austin, Texas, Sister Deb and John Radabaugh of Omaha, Nebraska, brother-in-law Norman Wallerstead of Oakland, Nebraska, sisters-in-law Marge Davis of Indianapolis, uh, Indiana, uh, Mabel Nelson of Sydney, Nebraska, also grandchildren, Peter and Pan Christensen, Carrie and Ryan Jackson, Trent and Corrine Grover, and Amber and Mike Trapp, also 10 great-grandchildren, Tanner, Cameron, and Ava Jackson, <coughs> Hannah and Emma Christensen, Cecilian and Malcolm Grover, and Griffin, Olivia, and Abigail Trapp. We will miss Donna, and we commend her into God's care this day. Our scripture readings this evening were chosen uh, by Donna's family and are very appropriate for, for this occasion. Our first scripture reading is Psalm 23. It's a psalm in which David reminds us of God's care over us through all of our lives. And I hope you take note of the personal pronouns in this passage, the personal and possessive pronouns. There are 16, and are reminded that the Lord can be our shepherd. It says, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading tonight is also a psalm, Psalm 121, a passage that reminds us that we can always look to the Lord for our help. Whatever our need might be, be it strength or comfort, uh, God will be there for us. It says this, I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. 
The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Here ends our song. I invite you at this time to turn to our next hymn. It's How Great Thou Art. It's number 147 in your blue hymnals. Number 147 in your blue hymnals.
of prayer. Heavenly Father, we just simply come to you tonight, and we thank you for the people that you give us in our lives, people that love us, that guide us in life, provide a blessing for us in life. And Lord, tonight we thank you for Donna and the blessing she was and the love she showed everyone here. We thank you that we could love her in return. We thank you for your love for her, and we thank you for your promises of eternal life that we can look forward to clasping Donna's hand in heaven again someday. And we pray tonight that as we meditate upon her blessing in our lives, your love for her and your love for us and your promises, we will leave here not only filled with peace, but perhaps even a touch of joy as we remember the happy times of Donna's life and your absolute promises of victory over death. That death doesn't have the final word. You do. Resurrection does. Jesus does. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, this evening, I can't help but think of, uh, I guess, a story, not really a parable, but maybe a story Jesus would tell in the Gospels, and it would be the story uh, of two men. One would build his house upon the sand. And of course, if we remember from the scriptures, Jesus would share how, well, the wind and the waves came and beat against that house and it fell. And then he would tell about the man who built his house upon a rock. And the wind and the waves came and it stood because, of course, it had been built on the rock of faith in Jesus Christ. I think of that a little bit tonight because I hope it's okay if we paraphrase that story a tad And tonight, as you remember Donna, we can maybe think perhaps that not even the wind or the snow uh, could topple the memory and the joy of her life as we gather here tonight. And I I think of this story a little bit too, because I know as I got to visit with um, Joan and Cindy on the phone the other day, and of course I knew, I knew Donna, but I knew, didn't know her as well as you, and I was touched by some of the memories you would share. And a theme kept running through my head as we visited. And that was the theme of foundations. And how, in many ways, Donna and, of course, Gerald, too, would lay a beautiful foundation in your lives and in the lives of all of you in the family. A foundation of love, a foundation of faith. And I think we have to also throw in the, a foundation of just fun and laughter, <laughs> And then I think of how that foundation has been passed on to the next generation. But she not only gave that foundation to you as daughters, but she gave it to your grandchildren and was beginning to give it to her great-grandchildren. And then I think of how Donna's foundation was built on the same thing. Faith, a great family, love. And then I think of how As we gather here tonight, we can know that same love and kindness Donna would exhibit in faith can not only be the foundation of our lives, but also the promises that our faith promises, the promises of eternal life. And we can think of how God has promised an eternal home, a heavenly home, as we trust in Jesus Christ as our Savior. And we can know that promise as a great foundation. That hope and promise has a great foundation in Jesus Christ. I, I know when I think of Donna's life, I, I enjoy hearing about her youth a little bit. Um, I know she lost a, a young, young sister, but I know she was close to Nancy all her years growing up. They were very close, enjoyed each other's company, grew up in a farm as we all know and heard. And then, of course, at some point, she would go to high school. And my understanding is uh, she would meet Gerald at a high school basketball game. Now, he was a little older. I assume he was going up to a game, and, and maybe she caught his eye. Somehow they visited. And I loved hearing this part of the story. Apparently, Gerald was just a little private, at least in his dating life. And we know he had a lot of siblings. But his family noticed he was driving up to Oakland a little bit more. But he didn't share why, at least initially. And, and, but of course, eventually, there'd be an engagement, there'd be a wedding, 
And, and, and I know it's so cool to think of and remember also tonight that it was a, a double wedding with Norman Nancy. And uh, they would begin their married lives together. And uh, how appropriate, especially when Donna was as close as she was to Nancy. And uh, what a blessing. And then I think of the memories, the great foundation of faith and love, but also the wonderful memories she would leave. Uh, you daughters, uh, Cindy and Joan, uh, memories of family coming for harvest, cousins, often some of them city slickers, I think. Is that right? And But they ate up farm life, and it provided a lot of fun for you with your cousins. I sometimes think God not only knew what he was doing when he invented family, he knew what he was doing when he invented cousins. Isn't it great to have a lot of cousins and enjoy their company, and you'd love having them come, you'd have a lot of fun together? And you know what especially touched my heart? Some of the memories that Donna and Gerald would provide would be Sundays. Because I know you would come up to First Lutheran here every Sunday, and then afterwards go and see your great-grandma who lived in town, I think maybe a few others occasionally, and then when you lost your great-grandma, I think go out to your grandma and grandpa on the farm. And you know, I sometimes think maybe we've lost a little something in our modern age. Uh, where perhaps Sundays are filled with so many other things. Uh, and of course, sadly, oftentimes not church. And, and sadly, not always family. But maybe other events that aren't bad in themselves. But I sometimes think perhaps we've lost a little something in America here. Um, and by the way, did you know... I know you're not too far off from me in a generation. I think I've got you beat for age, maybe. But, but uh, did you know the baby boom generation was the last generation of America where the majority of that generation grew up going to church and Sunday school? The current generation of American young people, the majority of young people in America today, they grew up without going to church and Sunday school. And then you read surveys you read articles, that it's the most depressed generation in the history of America, at least in terms of since they began to record those things and keep track of them. And perhaps it's because they don't realize there's a God that loves them, a God that can give them hope and meaning and purpose in life, and take their hand and walk with them through life, and not only love them, but forgive their sins and give them a promise of eternal life through faith in Jesus. What a blessing to be part of that generation where we were familiar going to church and Sunday school and then meeting with family afterwards. Uh, again, uh, what a great, great memory. And then I know also you remember the sacrifice of your mom and how sometimes maybe she'd go without, I'm not talking about food or anything, but maybe she'd like a new dress, but instead of getting a new dress, she worked it so both of you could get new dresses and, and get clothing that way. And then I know she'd go to your games, something she'd continue on to the next generation. Can I spill a little secret here? Um, Donna wasn't a sports groupie. You know, she didn't go to the games because she hung on the score. She didn't go to the games because somehow they thrilled her. She went there because she loved her family. And she wanted to be with them and cheer for them and support them. She'd do that for Gerald, too, for his softball games. And when he played for Hillside. And, uh, you know, great, great memories. And then as mentioned, passing all of this on to the next generation, your grandchildren. Because I know, as we heard a bit, you would gather for the holidays, Christmas, I believe Memorial Day, Fourth of July, and Gerald and Donna would have a two-bedroom home in Euling. And were there 10 of you in those days? Let me do the math. <laughs> and you'd all manage to fit in that home. I think a couple of the grandsons would be sleeping on the floor in the kitchen. But could that be beat? What great memories. And you so enjoyed those family gatherings together and enjoyed that family time. So much that I you know some of your grandkids would come and stay with Don and Gerald at times during the summer. And I know one of the grandsons came even to detassel corn. Was that you? Well, I think we have counseling here in Oakland. Um, 
I admire your work ethic because, of course, that's hard work and it's sweaty work. And I think a sister was counseled not to come and do it. But it was still fun to come and stay with Grandma and Grandpa. And I know your grandkids love going to Marv's Grocery Store. How cool. Something you can't do in the city usually. You just walk a few blocks. You're at Marv's. You're loading up on the treats, just enjoying small town life and, and, and taking all of that in. And, and, and you just loved it and just, just had good times doing that. And then, of course, there was one little downside, though, with staying with Donna, especially if it was summertime. And, you know, when you're young, you need a little more sleep, don't you? <laughs> well, I know there'd be a wake-up call at 7 a.m. every morning, and it wasn't like, time to get up, kids. Or an alarm, it was the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Donna would just start to vacuum, and of course, that meant it was time to get up. The day was beginning. <laughs> and great, great, great memories. But of course, it was all worth it, because it was great to be there and enjoy her food. I heard about the French toast. And on a skittle that I think's been passed down to the next generation. Popcorn any time you wanted. Did we hear about our sugar cookies? You know... Just great, great stuff. And then I know there were some travel times. I, I think uh, for Joan and Cindy, when you were young, it was usually to visit relatives. Uh, but that often included some cool places. And then I think for the next generation, there'd be maybe a little more adventure to Yellowstone, uh, out to Jackson Hole, whitewater rafting. By the way, can you envision Donna whitewater rafting? Well, she did it. In fact, the family can prove it because they have a photo. And, but her eyes were closed in the photo. <laughs> Maybe pretty smart. <laughs> Just keep them closed and you'll live through it. And you'll live through it. Great, great times. And I know she and Gerald modeled a, a great marriage. And I believe that was part of the reason. I know Amber would come back, Mary Mike here. By the way, again, on a similar night, the wind and the snow was howling, and, and then I, how amazing, I think you drove into Omaha for the reception, didn't you? I, I mean, I admire you for that, because I went home and hunkered down and put my feet up. And, uh, but yeah, coming here on Christmas Eve, seeing our beautiful Christmas Eve services, and how great, because I know the Christmas decorations were up for that. And I, I think they were anyway, weren't they? By the way, we just took them down this morning. But, uh, but, but yeah, how neat to model fun, joy, happiness, but also character, and very importantly, faith to the next generation. We, we know, obviously, Donna had her enjoyments, which, of course, mostly was you. <laughs> we're all of you. But, of course, after losing Gerald, uh, She'd be part of a coffee clutch in Euling, maybe even before, that I think went about two hours every morning in Euling, at least weekdays. So you go down, spend two hours having coffee with your friends, especially four or five other gals. And then oftentimes, going to Fremont with all of them for something to eat, which I don't know, I'm just guessing, hypothesizing here, that maybe sometimes it included a stop at Dairy Queen. I may be completely off base there. Um, but great memories. And then, of course, she had her, her special friend, Kitty, which, by the way, a cat they adopted because they wanted to bring it in out of the cold. You know, Donna would feed all the stray cats in Euling, but there was one that came by one evening, and it was a cold, cold, maybe like tonight. And Gerald thought, I don't know this cat will make it through the night. And so they decided to bring it in to keep it warm. And it never left. It never left. And I remember Donna's faith. You know, she and Gerald were very faithful, kind of right in this area, maybe sometimes over there on Saturday night. And then after Gerald passed, you know, she'd often come up with Gloria Wettergren, who we just lost a few weeks ago, too. And, and, uh, and I remember good devotional times in her home where we'd visit, have a great time just visiting. We'd read the scripture and we'd talk about the Lord. 
and we'd pray. And I'm going to treasure those times with Donna, and I'm going to always remember them. And of course, a faith based on what we read tonight, Psalm 23. I'm glad that psalm doesn't say the Lord is our shepherd or a shepherd. As mentioned, it says the Lord is my shepherd. And I can sometimes kind of envision the green pastures and still waters as the good times of our life. I'm sure Donna didn't have an enemy in the world, but you know how I like the paraphrase? He sets a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I sometimes like to paraphrase that as, he provides a feast for my soul, even in the face of adversity. Even in the face of adversity. And then he leads us through the valley of the shadow of death. And of course, Psalm 121 enters in. As I remember how, during those times of adversity, or even going through that valley, the Lord is there to help us, to take our hand. I don't know how many people ever read Pilgrim's Progress anymore. If you went back about 100 years, it was the best-selling book ever other than the Bible. Written by uh, Bunyan and John Bunyan, not Paul Bunyan. Paul's fictional. Um, In the 1600s, he was a Puritan in England. He wrote an allegory about the Christian life. And of course, at some point, Pilgrim and... and, uh, He comes to the cross, his burden of sin falls off. He experiences the forgiveness of Christ. But then the rest of the journey is sometimes full of joy, but sometimes temptations and pitfalls. But, and I believe it's actually when I say pilgrims, he goes with a friend named Christian, I believe. And they, they come to the river of death. And his friend begins to go through it first. The Christian or pilgrim's afraid. And his friend who's entered the river says, Be of good cheer, my brother. I have felt the bottom, it is good. I have felt the bottom, the riverbank. The bottom of the river and we can get across to the celestial city. A great, great reminder of the heavenly home we have in Christ. And as mentioned, that home has a solid foundation. And it's Jesus. You know, when I was a young boy... I would sit in church, as I know you did, and um, and I'd hear the hymns, and I'd hear the message, and something inside me told me that what I was hearing was true, and it was for me, and I wanted it. And I remember as a boy, inviting Christ into my life, telling him I sorry, was sorry for my sins, asking him to forgive me and be my Savior and Lord, and knowing that I was forgiven, and knowing that I did have eternal life. And what a great way to live, that as we trust in Christ as our Savior and Lord, trust in him to love us and forgive us and be our Savior, we can live in the assurance of heaven. In fact, it says, John writes in 1 John 5, 13, these things are written that you might know you have eternal life. We can live in the assurance of a heavenly home through faith in Jesus as our Savior. And again, it's a great way to live. Of course, in the meantime, God can walk with us as he did with Donna all through life. And and again, that home has a solid foundation. In John 14, in fact, Jesus describes it as a home. In my Father's home or house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come and take you to be with me and to dwell with me forever. When I think of foundations tonight, and I think of the solid foundation that God gave Donna and that she passed on to all of you, faith, hope, love, joy, fun, I also think of the solid foundation of his promise of a heavenly home. And I'm just going to close by saying, I think we all know the Johnny Cash song, Will the Circle Be Unbroken? I can envision family circles being reformed in heaven. Donna with her daughter, with Gerald, parents. Um, it's a great promise to look forward to. 
having those family circles reformed in heaven someday. So, Cindy and Joan, all of you in the family, as we remember Donna's life tonight, may we praise and thank God that she left a solid foundation of love and faith and joy. She's passed it on to you. I know you're passing it on to the next generation. And we're thankful for the solid foundation of God's love and his promises in Christ. May God be all with all of you in a special way in the days and weeks ahead. And may you all get home safely. <laughs> Let's pray. Lord, we come to you tonight and we just thank you for Donna. Lord, I thank you that I could know Donna. Just the fun she was, uh, the blessing she was. Again, thank you for the people that you give us in our lives. And we pray that as we come her in your care, in some ways say goodbye, but not really. We'll treasure the wonderful, beautiful memories she's left behind. Breathe them in, and then breathe in your promises. And allow you to freshly hold our hand. Remind us of your love. And remind us of the solid foundation of a heavenly home you have for Donna and us through faith in Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. At this time, I'd like to invite you as best you can from memory to join with me in confessing our resurrection faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion. In the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, give to your whole church in heaven and earth your light and your peace. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all of our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. God, the generations rise and pass away before you. You are the strength of those who labor. You are the rest of the blessed dead. We rejoice in the company of your saints. We remember all who have lived in faith, all who have peacefully died, and especially those most dear to us who rest in you. Give us in time our portion with those who have trusted in you and have striven to do your holy will. To your name with the church on earth and the church in heaven, we ascribe all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Donna Larson. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of Christ, amen. But before we do, we're going to have one final hymn. It's a great one. We even sing it in confirmation, I'll Fly Away. And it's, uh, I believe, is it 779, Cindy? Yes. 779 in your blue hymnal, I'll Fly Away. And then after that, we will have a short graveside committal here in church.
for I know that my Redeemer lives, and at last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, then from my flesh I shall see God. I am the resurrection and the life, says Jesus. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. But our commonwealth is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power which enables him even to subject all things to himself. And now, in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life, through our Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to Almighty God, our sister Donna Larson, and we commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The Lord bless her and keep her. The Lord make his face to shine upon her and be gracious to her. The Lord look upon her with favor and give her peace. Amen. Lord Jesus, by your death, you took away the sting of death. Grant to us, your servants, so to follow in faith, where you have led the way, that we may at length fall asleep peacefully in you and wake in your likeness. To the author and giver of life be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Rest eternal, grant her, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon her. And now, may the God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And once again, let us go in peace. In the name of Christ. Amen.